I spent, since 2005, years running programs to create advanced markets for irregular work, for hour-by-hour -hour labour. And parts of the UK government put millions into those projects. And other parts of the UK government opposed them. And part of the problem is this is an amorphous area. It's the world of people who do odd hours of babysitting, who will work in a cafe to get them through the lunchtime rush today, who will help a retailer out for a few hours when they've got unexpected footfall this evening. They'll lay your carpets, walk your dog, do ad hoc home care for older people. And Data points are thin at this part of the labour market, but broadly, about 20% of the population need odd hours of blue-collar work at some point each year. They can be carers, they can have recurring, recurring medical conditions, they can have complex childcare needs, partial employment, and they need extra hours that fits around that, um, low-income students, and so on. And if you could aggregate all the demand for ad hoc blue collar work from small businesses, households, corporates, public services, it would total about 5% of GDP. And all the signs are that those figures are rising. And the drivers seem to be the same as in other parts of the economy. New technologies are allowing us to purchase in smaller units, more precisely, often buying more as a result. And it kind of begs the question, well, if we were to try to create a really high quality 21st century market for irregular hour by hour labor, what would it have to do? And we're not asking this because we think casualization is good or jobs are history or anything like that. We're asking it in the same way that by 2008, the music executives were asking it. We may not be able to stop granularization. We need a high quality model of it that works for everyone, that's fair, uh, that's equitable, in which everyone plays by the rules. It's a governance issue. This level of the labor market now needs governance for the digital era. And that's requiring governments to, government bodies to think in new ways. But it's worth doing, I suggest, because Whatever the labor market is going to look like over the next couple of decades, and however many people become robotics engineers and Google coders, there's still going to be millions of people who each day are looking for odd hours of blue-collar work, and we owe it to them to give them the best possible markets.